Hey, Eric Dunn here. Um, I wanted to share uh, some information around um, how I was able to beat Frederico Collignon while I was on tour. Uh, I beat him a couple times in open singles, which is kind of my, I wouldn't say claim to fame, but really when I started to get noticed, uh, where I beat him once and then I beat him again later on, where people started to really notice maybe my game or started to listen to what I had to say. So I wanted to share that defense that I used against him, which was, I think, largely the main reason why I was able to beat him. Uh, I was able to score against him as well, which helped, but definitely it was the defense I was using. And I played against him. He was in a draw. So we, uh, I really encourage you, whenever you have the opportunity, to play in draws, uh, draw your partners. Because um, it's definitely a place that you can actually play these high-ranked players, and you can really get that opportunity and experience to play against them and maybe try some things and kind of experiment to see what works and what doesn't, so that you can maybe learn something and bring it into the uh, more open or more important events. Um, so we were in a draw. Uh, I was the goalie on this one team and he was playing with someone else and he was the forward. Um, I was doing my defense. I already had a really good defense against a lot of players. Um, but what he showed me very quickly uh, was that um, my traditional defense of a bait and switch defense, the traditional I'm going to mess with your mind kind of defense, just did not work against him. Um, he was able to read what I was doing so quickly, react to it and actually beat me to my baits. He was actually able to beat me to what I was trying to do. He shot where I wanted, shot when I wanted, he fell from my baits, but then in the end he actually beat me. So I'm going to demonstrate that now and, and talk about that on the uh, table. Kind of when you do a bait defense, say for example, say I'm baiting for this, uh, his, his pull side, this side here. Um, so you might go like, uh, show, show it to him, show it to him, but then not. Or show it to him, show it to him, and then not. Like that kind of thing. You might kind of do something like that. Well, it became very apparent that I would do that. And it was, I remember it pretty clearly. It was during, I think it was a draw, something like that. So something where I could experiment with some things. Where I showed him the thing, showed him the thing, and then switched. And he was able to beat the bait. Um, remember, I showed it, you know, showed it, and then switched, and he, he was able to beat it. He didn't hit dead bar, he was able to just be so fast and time it so well that, uh, I, you know, I called time out. I was like, you know, I set up the bait, I did exactly what I wanted, what, what I wanted to do. I, he shot exactly where I wanted him to go, but then uh, he beat me to it. And it was just like no other player has been able to do that. So that immediately led me to believe, well, that's not going to work. What I traditionally do when I play bait defenses and I kind of shift around and try to mess with people's minds, you know, it, uh, that's not going to work. He was just too good. So it became so apparent so quickly playing him that that defense was not going to work. Um, so that led me to kind of start to try other defenses uh, uh, against him. So one of the ones I tried was uh, what, uh, I don't know, I, I called it uh, play different songs in uh, your head. Uh, kind of defense. Kind of learned it from uh, Don Swan. I don't know if you've uh, ever heard the name uh, Don Swan. When I was coming up as a semi-pro or rookie, he was like one of the best goalies in the world. Uh, I think Don Swan and Russ King played together. Don Swan and Steve Biney. Uh, they might have won some world championships or done very well together. But Swan was this very flamboyant um, uh, goalie that was like pro master. So actually I wanted to share a uh, kind of a good and bad story about uh, Don Swan. Um, so when I was first learning to play uh, foosball, I was really into uh, Jim Stevens Inside Foos videos. I'd get every single video, every single DVD, every single VHS. Yes, I even have VHS copies of when he produced those. Um, and so I was watching these videos a lot and that's how I learned largely because I was up in Canada, not a lot of exposure to, uh, you know, the, these pro master players from uh, the US. Um, but I wanted to learn as, as much as I could. So I subscribed to these videos and I was one of the, you know, first in, in Inside Foos uh, subscribers that there was who had the season package or whatever and I was watching these videos all the time and these these players that were on these videos that kept showing up and getting to the finals were kind of like celebrities to me they were like the best players that I wanted to emulate and they were the uh, the players that were doing really well so I wanted to wanted to learn from them and uh, one of these players was was Don Swan at the time he was one of the he was like the top ranked most flamboyant outgoing kind of very uh, colorful and animated um, player uh, and what he was he was a goalie um, so I wanted to learn from you know from this so uh, I was watching these videos a lot and then I got the opportunity to go to a tournament I think I got on a bus and went down to somewhere in uh, eastern state somewhere like that um, and uh, I was at this tournament and uh, I was warming up and uh, Don Swan was there so this was like oh wow these, these big players are here I, you know I mean that's kind of cool um, so it's almost like me meeting a celebrity is a little bit, you know, gun shy, whatnot, but, uh, that was just me. 
Uh, so anyways, I'm warming up on this table and Don Swan, I notice, comes over and he starts watching me. And so for me, thinking that Mr. Don Swan's a big celebrity, this is a little bit nerve wracking. Uh, so anyway, so I'm sitting up on this table and I'm practicing and I try a pull kick and it goes off horribly wrong. It banks across the table and goes in the net. Or maybe it might even have gone in my own net. Um, and anyway, so Don Swan, he's kind of standing there and he goes, huh, he sucks and walks away. And so as you can imagine, I felt like this big. It was really hurtful. It was like kind of like, I wouldn't say a hero of mine, but a celebrity, someone I was following and looking up to. So that was a little bit hurtful and maybe a little bit of a learning lesson for me that these are just people and they have good and bad attitudes, but still there's things of value to be learned from them. Like they have the skills, they have the experience. I'm not gonna just stop learning from them just because maybe they said a bad thing or not a nice thing to me. Um, so it's also a lesson for everyone as well. Like I see this a lot that people, they'll gain an opinion of someone who oh, I don't like what they stand for. Oh, they're a different religion. There's nothing for me to learn from them. I'm not even gonna listen. But that's such a, you're missing out on such a great opportunity to learn from other people that have had that experience, that might have that knowledge that you can learn from. You don't have to subscribe or enjoy or do the same things they do, but you can learn from them, uh, good and bad, uh, what not to do and what to do. Um, so anyway, so that was one of the things I learned from, uh, or I had a interaction with Don Swan, it was interesting, uh, but then I still learned these defenses from him and then I'll uh, describe it now on uh, the table. I learned some from Swan. I heard this talking to some other people and even some defenses that he does, uh, where he described it as you play a different song in your head uh, every three seconds and you switch it. You, you don't give them the same defense for more than two or three seconds. So um, you might think of this as, you know, say for example, you might start with three seconds, you know, just doing something like this. And then you might switch it to something like that. And then switch it to something like this. And then switch it to something slower and then switch it to something else you know as you can see there's there's really no pattern no baiting happening it's just a switching up of the defenses that you're showing the person so they can never really get a comfortable read um, so I tried that against uh, Federico and uh, it worked phenomenally well um, I tried against Federico in that uh, in that first match during that same draw where he showed me very quickly and I blocked him five or six or times, or whatever, but he still finished out the match and, and ended up winning. But that was kind of a takeaway from that match that, that you know, this defense can work. Um, so I'll show you another example, and I'm actually gonna kind of hum little tunes to show you what kind of the mentality of, of it is to allow you to change the pace of the defense. It's very important. You can't just change your defense and then think you're, you're kind of, you know, changing things appropriately. You really want to be able to change the speed of defenses and never show them the same defense again in that same, possession um, and I'll explain why in, 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 in a second so it could be something like you know and then you might switch into something completely different maybe a pull defense you know, maybe bring in Chucky for a little bit Chucky you know Chucky split 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 a lot, a lot of switches and then still and maybe a little big movement big movement and then quick and then switches switches and then just something like that. Any, any little, you know, don't show them the same, the same defense for more than two or three seconds. And the reason why this works so well uh, is that if you think about a way a really a high level player thinks and acts and the way they behave, they're going to go through a process of steps that they're used to doing. They're very good at it. They're actually, they've mastered it. They're going to go through a process of steps. So step one is likely something about reading the defense. You know, step two is, you know, deciding on what it is you want to shoot against. And step three is waiting for it and then executing against it. That's my, you know, five and fundamentals of foosball. But there's some form of that in what every good high-level player does. So if you think about that, I've taken away the ability, but just by switching, never showing them the same defense twice within the same possession. Um, I've taken away the, the meaningfulness or, or the, the usefulness of one of their steps, which is that, that read. So you're reading something to try to get a read. And then based on what you saw, you're trying to come up with a decision. But if you've never shown that defense again, that read that they made is useless. The decision that they've made is useless because they're not going to see it again. And so now they have to kind of be able to be very quick at reading, even if they understand what it is, what, what, what it is you're doing. Um, so that, that's why it works. If someone's so drilled and so consistent at that pattern of read, being able to read a defense, you know, react to it, wait for it again to happen five or six seconds later, see it again and react to it appropriately and then take advantage that's good on them, but if you don't show them the same defense in that possession ever again, 
you know, you've taken them out of their game and now it's on you. Uh, it's to your advantage. So I was able to use this in, in open singles against him twice. Uh, I think I've only played him twice, maybe three times in, in open singles. The first time he likely beat me, but the last two times I, I beat him. Using, using this defense where I would block him eight, nine times in a row. And people would comment. They'd, they'd be watching. I wasn't keeping track of it, of course. That would be horrible if I was. People were watching and they would say like, man, you blocked him eight times in, in a row during one point within a match. So that just shows you the effectiveness of something like, of a defense like that. I also wanted to share another story um, about when I was using this defense against Fred and competing against him. Uh, as you probably know, Frederico is a very competitive person, as you must be to be at that level, and I totally respect that. Um, so during the second match I played him in open singles, he had his, his wife, Ingrid, uh, come and watch as well to, I think, try to see if he can pick up or they could pick up on, on, on my defense and as to what, what to do. Um, so I remember Tommy Atkinson was refing that match and uh, we're playing playing away and Tommy um, I think catches them actually spotting so what, what spotting is is something that's that's actually illegal that's when one player is watching on the outside and giving signals to the player who's playing um, to tell them what to do uh, so that that that's illegal it's like, like kind of like good strategy to me but that is one of the rules that that is illegal so it's actually a little bit um, funny and semi-rewarding that they felt they needed to do that. It didn't work. It didn't change anything. I still beat them. Neither of them could figure out that defense because as I all explained, because as I explained, that defense is so about there's no pattern. It says I'm switching the defense every three seconds. If you don't catch advantage of it, then you're not going to see it again in that possession. So there's really nothing really to read and that's just not what they were used to. So I remember Tommy, I think, gave them a warning to actually uh, stop, stop spotting. Um, so it just gives you a, an indication of one, uh, what the top level players do when they are that competitive. They, they do everything they can in order to win, which is great. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm saying all the power to them uh, for doing that. And then you always got to push those rules um, as far as you can, as far as you're allowed to. And if there's a ref there, that's his job to make sure the rules are being enforced. And Tommy did his job, uh, thank, thank, thankfully, even though it did really help them. One last ad. Um, I wanted to kind of share the kind of the next level application of, of this defense. So yeah. if there was a, um, a certain one of those defenses that he gained success at, I would either not show him that one again or only show it very quickly and then move on. So say, for example, if I'm doing one of the defenses and I'm say, say it's the switch, 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 and then he shoots on that one and actually was able to, to beat it. Then the next time I'm going through that next possession, I'm going through changing the defenses. When I go into the switch, switch, I might only show up for a brief second. So switch, switch, and then into the next one to kind of not show them the same defense from possession to possession and not show them in the same order. So, you know, you can have to apply these concepts to switch things up, keep them off their guard. If they're gaining success, don't show them that. Move away from it. Don't fight it. Uh, don't keep trying to butt your head against that. Don't, don't think, oh, this is my defense. I have to make it work. Um, don't be shy. Don't be afraid to move on to something else. Try something else. Uh, and that's how you're going to find out if things are working or not. If you keep doing the same thing and keep not finding success, what have you learned? You've just learned that that doesn't work. You have not tried other things to maybe learn that those could work. Uh, so you have to be willing to try different things. Uh, at least that's what I was able to do and how I stumbled upon this uh, defense that actually worked very well against him. So again, it's, you know, yeah, you're doing the three seconds, but then as they gain success in any one of those, Try to remember that and adjust to it. You can even use that as a miniature bait. You know, show the, like, do the switch, switch. Remember when he, maybe when I did the switch, switch, he shot pull side. So maybe I'll do the switch, switch, block pull next time. Uh, you know, and that kind of thing. So it's a next level kind of thing you have to kind of remember. You don't kind of like consciously remember. You just kind of, kind of trying to be aware. Remember what happened. Uh, if it helps, maybe make mental notes. Okay, you know, next time I get a thing, I'm not going to do that kind of thing. So whatever works. Uh, so just uh, that's kind of the next level application that I found myself using during those matches and thought I'd share that. So good luck with that.